Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Earthly Headlines. Uh, today we're going to talk about the Spanish Stonehenge that was not really excavated, but revealed from drought, uh, the dry spell in Spain, uh, Extremadura, uh, Spain to be exact. It, they're calling it the Spanish Stonehenge, just, you know, self-explanatory here. You can see the, um, the image. And it really is a peculiar site that had been... Uh, discovered way earlier uh, a long time ago and then um, before they could uh, take anything out um, or any of the stones out anyway they were able to extract some of the artifacts but the stones themselves they just weren't able to move in time and they, it got submerged after they built this dam in this part of Spain here so uh, this region here is called Extremadura and then the northern part which is called Caceres right here is where the dam is now the first thing that i that brought my mind uh was uh i mean the first thing that came up into my mind was stonehenge here in the the uk now stonehenge is purportedly about five thousand years old and so is this uh spanish stonehenge now obviously the first question is well how are these two sites related and then you remember that the English Channel here wasn't always the English Channel. It was still being submerged. It was fully sub. This it became the English Channel right around probably 6,000 BC or so around there. But it was um, at one point in time it, this was connected to France and the, and therefore the mainland. So the fact that Stonehenge and Spanish Stonehenge exist. Uh, may be related to the fact that, again, uh, this part of England was connected to the mainland. And, of course, that means that there were probably people coming and going. And then you think about Doggerland and how that was connected and how there were 100% there were people living there and thriving there. So um, it does make sense that if Stonehenge and Spanish Stonehenge are linked, then they probably belong to a similar... A monolithic type of, or a culture that was capable of uh, creating uh, a monolithic site such as the, uh, this so uh, anyway um, so these waters in this reservoir outside Paraleta de la Mata and Caceres receded and you see this uh, circle of megalithic standing stones from the deep end and then again they date these from the second and third millennium BC uh, and which formed the site of a sun temple on the banks of the river Tagus and were last seen by locals six decades ago. So this was the last time that people saw this site 60 years ago. Um, and then once it got submerged, it was never seen again until uh, recently. And then now the locals are trying to, um, they're, they're obviously trying to make it a tourist attraction and they're also trying to move the stones to a safer part of of the land so that it won't get submerged again so uh this this uh local here angel castaño he says we grew up hearing about the legend of the treasure hidden beneath the lake and now we can finally uh, view them and uh there perhaps were treasures b uh, buried beneath this place because one of the archaeologists who i don't i forget his name um he did do a makeshift excavation and took some of the artifacts which are now in Germany I think um, so uh, anyway uh, the collection of 144 stones uh, some of uh, which reach two meters high and have engravings of serpents are arranged in circles but like Stonehenge it is unclear exactly who put them there and for what purpose now um, there's been a lot of work done on Stonehenge itself this Stonehenge English uh, Stonehenge and there have been astronomical alignments involved. There have been, um, it, it's been purportedly used as some sort of calendar, some sort of uh, marker of, of uh, the cosmos and all of that stuff. And it wouldn't surprise me that, that if this place had the same uh, deal going on with it. Uh, the Romans came across this site and they held it in high regard as well. Um, as did uh, the Romans uh, did also with Stonehenge. So again, this site must have had some sort of significance if the Romans uh, kept it around as well. And the Romans usually, what they did, especially with temples, 
uh, they would build on top of the sacred ground, meaning that they recognized the area as sacred, and then they would just build over it. Uh, I don't think it happened, it didn't happen with this site, but they did preserve it, and they didn't mess with it when they got there, so uh, that alone counts for something. Uh, the site would have uh, been created over thousands of years using granite transported from kilometers away. Again, I think uh, Stonehenge had something similar. They had uh, stones being transported to that specific area. Um, like Stonehenge, they formed a sun temple and burial ground. They seem to have religious but also economic purpose being one of the few points of the river where it was possible to cross. Uh, you can't see it in the map here, but there is a lake and a river system in this part of Extremadura. So again, that would make sense that the people would go to the point of the river where it was possible to cross and set up this sort of burial ground, sun temple, this point of significance or point of interest where there would be people uh, who wouldn't miss it. They would absolutely come across it and maybe they would pay respects, maybe they would ha have offerings, maybe it was a p like a compass, maybe it helped people... Um, travel along the way and kind of like a landmark where people would know where they were again they're not sure exactly because this pl this has been submerged for 60 years 60 plus years and no one really had a chance to do thorough research on it so if they are to move these stones and they've got to do it very precisely and they've got to before they even touch anything they're going to have to map everything out account for all the positioning of all the stones and be really careful that they don't overlook anything when they uh, move this. Uh, the stones began to emerge from the receding waters earlier this summer, and they're right now they're on dry land. Um, but again, it's only a matter of time before it's, it gets submerged once again. Uh, if they miss this chance, it could be years before they are revealed again. And the stones, which are granite and therefore porous, are already showing signs of erosion and cracking. So if we don't act now, it could be too late. So um, yeah, there is. A timer so to speak because things are gonna start eroding even more the stones are gonna become more brittle and um, there is hope that the government <laughs> will step in to move the stones within a few weeks to the nearby site but then again um, there's a lot of trepidation here because there's a time limit and you don't want to rush things like this this is a 5,000 plus year old site so there is a lot to think about and you if I were one of the archaeologists, I wouldn't want to uh, rush into any hasty, uh, unsafe decisions before they move this. Um, and again, they're, the government's trying to capitalize on this as a tourist attraction, but I think more important than that, they should just uh, really take... I don't take some drone aerial shots of it, uh, study each stone, their position, see if there's any alignments, um, and just go from there. Because if you just hastily move everything, I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, the Romans were the first to value the site, which was then left neglected until Hugo Obermeier, the German priest and archaeologist. Back in the 20s, he visited it and then excavated the site, like I said earlier, took the treasures, moved them back to Germany, and they are now in display in Munich. Um, it doesn't specify exactly what the treasures were, and I'd be really interested to uh, see that. Um, but again, there's a lot going on here, and if you just look at that map, again, um, if you just use your mind's eye and just view all this as one continent, back ten, just go back 12,000 years, for instance, it's not hard to imagine that there is a site like Stonehenge here, and there's another site like Stonehenge in Spain, and there's probably other sites like that as well. It's hard to believe that if they were the only two, especially if they came from the same culture. Now, um, there's, there's all kinds of uh, megalithic uh, sites all over Europe, um, and again, it would be peculiar to see if there are other sites like this and let's just say, for example, that they do find a bunch of Stonehenge-like sites. Perhaps um, it might reveal something larger. So, for instance, maybe they're all on the same uh, uh, longitudinal line, for example. Or maybe they're, they're in some sort of... Uh, there's a rhyme and reason to why they're, uh, they're positioned where they are. Uh, maybe if, 
you took an aerial footage and and like a grid you put a point every in in each site where each site would be maybe there's even more information to be gleaned from that again the um the opportunities are or not the opportunity the the the, the possibilities are endless here and i'm pretty certain that there's more out there or if there isn't and if they don't exist then they must have existed at some point in the past and it's just weird that we find all of these megalithic sites that are aligned now with the stars and it's at this point it's almost irrefutable to say that these uh earlier uh humans that were these people that were living here were merely hunter gatherers and they didn't really know anything else aside from anything terrestrial it's kind of a smoking gun now that they knew or they had they had their eyes set on something beyond terrestrial earth they had their eyes set set on on the sky and the stars uh so anyway let me know what you guys think about this um i'll have another episode up uh probably this weekend episodes have been kind of slow lately just because um i've been taking a little bit of a break and i have a day job so i'm i've been busy with that as well but around september i'm going to start going back to my usual pace of about three or four videos uh a week and i have a huge backlog of stuff that i need to do so i'm probably going to sit down and record a bunch of them at once and then just disseminate them throughout the week so uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments um about spanish stonehenge uh if you guys have any questions or if you guys know of other similar sites uh you guys know what to do uh hit me up in the comments hit me up on twitter and i'll talk to you guys later